Hello friends and welcome to the Virtual Strangers Review Discussion of Dread Halls. I have your host Wes with me as always, my good friend Roots Roots. Uh, this is an oldie but a goodie, right? This is uh, This one's been around a minute. Yeah, yeah, it's been around for, uh, what, six years almost? Yeah, yeah, 2013 this game debuted at the Oculus and Indicade VR Jam. And for those of you that aren't very good at math, that means that this predates Oculus CV1 by three years. This is a DK1 game, and uh, it came out originally on the uh, Gear VR it was a launch title for Oculus Rift, and it has been a uh, a title that has persisted over time uh, and been released on every major VR device that has ever came out, pretty much. I mean, uh, it's been on all the mobile devices. It's on Go. It's on Rift. It's on Quest. And by the way, as of today, as we're recording this, which is uh, Thursday last week, um, it's it just now released on Oculus Quest, actually. So it wasn't available before, but it is now $10. And, uh, you know, this horror games are my thing, right? And I've always been looking. I'm always on the search for really good ones because there's lots of okay horror games in VR but there are very few really good ones and main fan Justin uh, he always brings up Dread Halls and uh, I'm just like you know okay sure it has a reputation everyone says that but I always kind of disregard it because it is so old and I know that these early adopter VR guys are going to have nostalgic feelings about the this game. We all have our games that we feel nostalgia uh, over when we think about playing them or when we see someone else playing them. It takes us back to when we were new in VR. Uh, like Rush of Blood is that for me. Res Infinite is that for me. Um, Dread Halls is, is that for a lot. Of PC gamers. Anyway, um, I always disregarded this game because of that. Obviously, it's got some data graphics um, from a uh, texture perspective, but uh, Roots chose it this past week as his review title, and uh, I finally got some time in this game. Now, Roots. Um, when did you first experience Dread Halls? I tried Dread Halls uh, maybe two or three months into having my CV1. So I'd say 2018. Been out, you know, uh, obviously for five years. I'd never heard of it. I um, think I might have seen Zim Talk playing it on uh, one of his streams or something. And, and I thought, man, I, this is really cool. I want to check it out. And, uh, um, I was blown away by the immersion because um, like you, I you know, it, you don't think it's okay. It seems basic and on the surface it's basic, um, but they do such a good job of making you feel like you're in that space and there's some creepy shit going on. And uh, really, it, it and you were making point to this before we started recording, um, it's the sound, man, the audio, the way they do this audio. Um, it's it's top notch is it not yeah that that's what really surprised me about this game you know i had a good idea of what this game was i w i've actually i was well aware of this game but long before i ever had a vr headset you know i was watching i was listening to people that had the the, the developer kit the original oculus developer kit and hearing them talk about the games that they were playing that was so amazing you know to experience in vr and dread halls always came up so i knew about this game a long time ago and um graphically you know older textures but it works these are brick walls with, with brick floors and wooden doors it's not stuff that that's super technical you know 
stuff that they had down pretty much at the onset of VR. Nothing about any of this surprised me. I guess visually it worked a little bit better than I thought it would. Um, but the audio, the audio was the big surprise here. They have legit horror movie style sound effects and ambient noises going on. And it really works to build the tension uh, within you as you're traveling down these corridors. Uh, the sound really makes it, uh, it makes you want to stop. It makes you to where you don't want to see what's around the next corner, uh, if that makes any sense. Uh, it makes perfect sense to me um, it, because it's creepy as hell and you're hearing weird stuff and, and you're seeing things. And what's weird is uh, there's so many different types of creatures out there and I don't even know if I've seen them all. And each one does different things. I've ran into these people where are the um, things where you, you can't move. And you don't know until, you know, it'll tell you, oh, don't move or whatever. But it, sometimes you forget and you'll see that and then you end up dying. Or um, or there's other ones where uh, um, you uh, um, you just want to get the hell away from them fast. And, and so you need to know uh, what you're dealing with. Um, and it, it's crazy. And then, uh, you know, some of them you end up with some crazy jump scares. Um, I don't know. Did you run into any jump scares? Uh, you know, I know you're you're the man of steel. So uh, <laughs> if it can make you jump, uh, did you get jump uh, scared by anything in this or jump scare wise? Yeah, it actually fairly early on got me one really good time. And, and to, to get any kind of a reaction out of me more than just a giggle. Uh, I mean, those of you who watch me and have watched my content know that it takes something to get a reaction out of me. It got me. It got me one really good time. And for those of you who don't know the style of game this is, this is pretty much a labyrinth. It's a maze. You're trying to find your way through. And it's procedurally generated. So uh, every playthrough is different than the last. The map changes every time you run the program. So it's infinite playthroughs, you know, uh, infinite different possibilities. But... Uh, Basically, the way this game works is you're looking to find these eyeballs here. So you're searching these corridors and uh, there's you're constantly going around, peeking around corners and going through doorways. And you're trying to avoid these uh, creatures that reside these halls. And um, pretty early on, the, they're, they're, there aren't that many of them. So, so you feel pretty liberal about moving around. And that's the way I was. I wasn't really feeling too scared. Uh, <laughs> but I came into this room where they have these gargoyle statues. It's just a normal, you know, pretty freaky, evil-looking gargoyle statue. But it's a, a gargoyle statue. It's just a statue. Um, so I searched the room. Nothing in it that I need. I go to walk out and leave the room. And, I, you know... When you have things that chase you, you get in the habit of closing the door behind you. So I turn back around to close the door, and this gargoyle is right in my face. Like, it wasn't moving, but it had moved. And I wasn't expecting it to be there. So when I turned around, it kind of scared the crap out of me a little bit. And uh, I cursed at it a time or two and, and went on about my way. But uh, very well done. And I, the, the tension level wouldn't have been high enough to even get that out of me if it weren't for the the uh the level design and the sound design in this game being so phenomenal yeah as you're going around it's building and building and building and then when something's there it's like you're shocked and i ran into that gargoyle as well and what was funny is i i had gone in there and um and i was it was there and i i just started i was talking shit to it and i was like hey buddy what's going on you know and i was and I and I, I I can't even remember what I said, but I was I was talking smack to it, and then I turned around and I went and was going about my business. And like you, I turned around and it wasn't right there, but it was behind me, and it was like all of a sudden froze, and it was like maybe five six feet, and it creeped the fuck out of me, <laughs> man. And then so I wanted to get away from it, and of course it's gonna follow you. Um. So yeah. So when I when I hear that story. It, it to me it just it was just such a um a different of course anybody that goes in there now is not gonna know now they know the gar gargoyle is uh 
is blown but um it, it, it's just uh it's just such a, it's so good i don't know yeah um normally procedurally generated games aren't my sort of thing but they do a good job with it here um there is a uh, a story being told here you find letters as you search the these labyrinths in these rooms and in addition to the letters there are these stone faces that you'll find periodically periodically on the walls and uh, if you walk up to these stone faces eyeballs appear and they begin to talk to you and if you pay them a tribute uh, of these ancient gold coins that you keep finding you can ask them questions and they kind of fill in the blanks with the story which I thought was pretty cool um, and, and when you're playing through the story campaign even though the levels are procedural and uh, some of them are easier than others Th there does appear you know I'm not a hundred percent sure but there appears to be a progression with the enemies that you'll find like some of the stuff that you find in the later uh, corridors I don't think that you would find in the early ones I mean mm -mm. there are some bigger enemies later on in the game that uh, I think are there because it's later on in the game yeah, and that's there. There, and it is good to mention, or we shouldn't mention. There's two modes. You can do the uh, story mode, and then there's a like a free mode where you just get thrown into the to the thing, and your your whole point is to get to the end. Um, and you could find anything. You could be really tame. It could be really fucked up. You could run into a million things, or only four. Um, it's just completely random. Uh, but, uh, so I, I feel like they did a really good job of giving you a reason to go back. And I didn't know that about, um, the letters. I know I did. Did you, uh, do some questions? I did do some of that when I was, I just didn't feel like I learned that much, but, um, you know, I feel like, uh, if you actually went through the whole thing, you probably do learn a lot more about the story. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I need to put more time into it, but I, get, I I did glean a few little bits of information from it by reading the letters and asking questions. Uh, it's cool how they set it up because it kind of makes it seem like, I mean, if I'm understanding it correctly, of course, it makes it seem like it applies to you as a person, whereas uh, you entered this voluntarily uh, by choice, but uh, it turns out you know even though you came into it for entertainment uh it's not so entertaining anymore and now you're stuck you know what i mean that mm. they make it so that like um the reason why you choice made the the choice to enter dread halls is because the dark spirits are influencing you and they beguiled you into coming into the game and now you have to prove your worthiness if you want to ever leave it, it kind of it's if I'm reading it correctly, it's cool how they've done it because they kind of make it so that it might apply to you as a person, not just the character in the game. Did you notice that guy running from that black mist? That was a good move. That was a very good move. That's <laughs> yes. exactly what I would do when I see that shit coming. You better run because it's not something that you want to chill out in um, for sure. Let um, me ask you something. There, you find lock picks all over the place in this game. But yeah. I haven't really came across any doors that are that hard to unlock. Did you? Do you use the lock picks at all? No. I, it's funny you say that because um, I was looking at the beginning of this video, and it was showing him picking up lock picks, and I was like, "What do you? Why? What's the point? Why? Why pick them up? You know, you're not going to use them, dude. I don't. I don't think. I mean, supposedly it's supposed to make it go quicker, but." You know, like you said, even though, I mean, all you do is you grab the handle and kind of shake it. Like, <laughs> yeah, is it really that much faster to open up your menu and grab a lock pick than it is just to go like this? No, I don't think it is. And I, I, I was wondering the same thing. I, I, I don't know if there's maybe in a different version, maybe it did, maybe they used to be harder. Um, I do know that uh, the lamp um not having it full and if you don't have extras is very stressful because your light starts getting really dim and um the sounds i i don't want i want full bright light i want to flip every light <laughs> switch in the place on and uh so it's a very sketchy thing to run out of that for sure 
so i wish they would get rid of the lock picks and maybe add some more oil um yeah that, i literally happen. i literally say that on my my playthrough by the way if you want to see me play this game for the first time ever click that but uh i literally say that uh in that video that if i could just trade some lock picks for lamp oil that i would be great <laughs> yeah because you know? they're lock picks and money everywhere but no fucking oil i'm in a dark labyrinth i don't need lock picks that are worthless i need more oil roots needs the light to be bright it's uh it's very sketchy in here so it is and i don't i don't know how far it goes i didn't finish it i, I played through the entire uh first level which is four different labyrinths and then i played into the second one uh which is i think is three more but i don't know it could go even further after that i have no idea but uh, i'm definitely going to be going back into the game uh this it's october guys so it's horror games full steam ahead with the rare exception of maybe a, a trover here and there or, or something like that asgard's wrath that drops um it's going to be all horror all, all month long for me and it, if i take the to the correct mood it might be horror for the rest of the year <laughs> if i get to where i'm digging it but uh definitely going to go back into this one uh i recommend from me uh if you have vr then you you can get this game it's on gear vr it's on go it's on quest oculus steam uh, it's even you can even get this on PSVR as a part of uh, a compilation of uh, VR classics. I forget what the name of the comp compilation is, but it's got like Castle Storm on it, this, and a couple of the uh, other OG VR games. But uh, I, I recommend for me here, largely what I expected it to be, but actually a bit better than I thought it was. So. Uh, uh, yeah, 10 bucks I know of on Quest. Probably uh, around that on any other platform as well. Um, pick it up. It's it, fun. It, it's always on sale too. So, you know, it's definitely a game that's uh, it's worth. It's If anything, there, you know somebody that you want to play this, to watch them play. I would love to see, and I, I'll throw this out there now. Alex, buddy, I'd love to see it. A let's play of you playing this game. Um it would be it would it would it would make my soul happy <laughs> let's put it, it that would way. be a, an interesting one because there's nothing very gory about this game i mean you do find some like limbs and things on tables lying around but like the enemies there's not a whole lot of in, enemy contact like you peek around corners you see the enemies and you go the other way that's pretty much how this goes there's a few jump scares, but um, again, this whole thing is about building tension. And then they build the tension to the point where they finally get you and it, you know, releases. But uh, I would say that this is a good horror game for beginners because it isn't like totally violent and there's not a lot of blood and gore in it. Uh, it's just... Uh, Good old fashioned, you know, solid game design is what makes this game as good as it is. Yeah. And the fact that it's constantly different every time. Um, and uh, like you said, that they build the tension so well that first time I went in this game, um, I roamed around. I, I kid you not, probably it must have been like 15 minutes and I and I got so comfortable and then I think I was when I ran into that gargoyle or something, um, or something happened. It, so they do they they lull you in. They they get it peaceful. Hey, this is nice. This is this is nothing in here. And then all of a sudden shit starts happening. Um, you still hearing weird noises, but um, you don't see anything for a while. At least I didn't. But everything's every time's different. So yeah, it's just a masterful use of an age old recipe. I mean. They're just playing with the, the basic things here that, that you've been scared of since you were, you know, five years old looking for monsters under the bed. They put you in narrow spaces, they take the light away, and they give you weird noises. It's a basic recipe, but it works every time, and uh, these guys know that, and they take advantage of it well. Yeah. 
All right, so I guess that's going to wrap us up here with our talk on Dread Halls. What do you think about it? I know most of you have played this game already. Let us know what you think about it in the comments down below. And if you've liked this review, click the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and don't forget the notification bell to keep up with all of our nearly daily content here on the Virtual Strangers channel. With that said, we'd like to thank you folks once again for watching and for Roots. I'm Wes. We'll see you tomorrow, friends. Bye-bye. Take it easy.